Hey everybody, me, Monaco, Go Edison Tech Science Department. Uh, I am doing the pre-lab video for your flame test lab. I know it looks backwards, but that is the paperwork you need to be using and following along in as I do background, purpose, and procedure for you so that you know what to do when you are going into the lab. It's a cool, fun lab, one of my favorites. Stay tuned. So we're talking about our flame test lab and you got some background and purpose to fill out first. First thing I want you to know is there's a fact out there that different elements burn different colors in a flame. This allows identification of unknown elements. You know this because fireworks are different colors. That's a fact. Now let's go to the explanation. Why is this the case? Well, heat excites electrons to jump from the ground state to the excited state, okay? And down in the bottom left over here, yeah, there's a picture of a generic Bohr diagram with a nucleus and well, four energy levels. So we're talking about the simplest scenario where we've got one electron in the first energy level and it can be jumped up to any of the other options out there. So it absorbs heat and gets excited. That's that red line coming in over here. Boop, heat comes in and hits that electron. It can jump to any one of these locations. Well, as the electron returns to the ground state, it loses the energy that it absorbed. So it wants to get back to where it came from. And the result is a unique color and fingerprint of the element. So when it jumps from state four down to one, for example, it might release a purple color. And from three to one, it might be pink and from two to one it might be green. So when you get all these colors overlapping, you get a mix and you can then see that the element is burning a certain color. So the purpose of this lab is to identify the unknown compounds, okay? Let's get to the procedure. All right, friends. First thing you're gonna to wanna to do when you get into your lab station is make sure that your table has the four known chemical compounds to test and that you have one of these little loop at your station. You also wanna make sure the gas is on, yep, and ready to go. And you have a wash bottle nearby to wash your loop in between trials. Flame test is actually really simple. All you're gonna do is put a drop of the chemical onto the loop and then stick it in the flame. The hardest part is actually seeing the color that is coming off the particular chemical because it's very subtle. Um, I'll show you an example in a second when I turn out the lights, but the loop itself will cause the flame to turn orange. And that is not the color we're looking for. We're looking for other colors, a little more exotic, like purples, and greens, and reds, and magentas, and things like that. So you have to be very careful where you put the loop into the flame so that you can observe the result that we're looking for. And I'll show you some good examples. So for procedures wise, the first thing you got to do is make sure that your station is stocked and ready to go. You got a wash bottle, the four chemicals, a loop, a nice piece of paper to keep things on, burner, and uh, your lab paperwork, obviously. And what you're going to do first is write down the names of the four chemicals, boom, and the formulas, boom, they're written on the bottles as well. And the color that you write down here in your data is the color that you observe in the flame that's not orange. So the subtle colors that I'm hoping to see you. That's for the known chemicals. And in between each test you need to rinse off your loop with the distilled water. So you'll test all the known chemicals first and then you'll go on to the unknowns. And these are labeled A's, B's, and C's and stuff like that. Did that in reverse order. And the flame test result, you'll want to write down the color that you observe because then you'll be able to match the knowns to the unknowns and identify the unknown chemicals, which is, of course, the overall purpose. The analysis questions involves a reference, so you might want to look that up. It goes into excitation and emission. We got a few regents level questions and then our typical CEI. So I verbalized to you the procedure, but now I'm gonna show it to you. Gotta go turn out the lights. All right, I'm back. And now I'm going to show you how to do this procedure for the known chemicals. I'm gonna use a different chemical 
that is not one of the knowns, so you can't get a result from your lab just by watching the video. I'm gonna use a different one called barium chloride. So the first thing I do is I turn on my gas, I can hear it, light on fire. I want a nice, small, but hot flame, okay? Low heat, small tip, small flame. First thing you wanna do is clean off your loop. Maybe there's some fingerprints on there. Heat it up till it's red orange. Note, this orange color is the color that the loop burns by itself, okay? So that is not the color that we're looking to report in our report. Let it cool down for a second. Take your squirt bottle and into the sink. Give it a good squirt, a good rinse, and there it goes, okay? Now, to test your unknowns and your knowns, you need to remove the drop bottle cap and you gotta get a single drop of the liquid into the loop. So hold it over the sink and gently drip. Ah, there we go. A drop of the liquid onto it. I'm not sure you can see that very well, but I'm holding a bead of liquid in there. Now I'm gonna put it into the flame. I wanna get it in there so that I can observe the colors it's gonna burn. Okay, so you saw the orange of the loop but now this one's got a subtle color in there as well. See that for a second there? It gone quick. It disappeared very quick and easy. Quick. Very, very quick. So you may use a second or third drop. Rinse off in between. Maybe you didn't see it and you gotta see it again. Get a drop of the liquid on there. Okay, it's a bigger drop. Hopefully it'll show us a better result. Kind of heat it in the flame there in the edges. Get down into the hot part of the flame and you see that dancing colors start to show up. For me, this particular example looks a bit of it like a light yellow green almost. Yeah, there it goes. Now as you can see, if I hold the loop in there too long, it's not showing me that dancing color anymore. It's just kind of turned orange. So one more time to show you. Rinse between samples, even if you're doing the same one twice. Drop of the chemical into the loop. Aha. Bigger drops usually get better results. You got a very steady hand for this. And then you hold it in the reducing flame and you see the dancing colors and those are the ones that we're looking for. Sometimes it dries up and you get a little residue. There we go. Yeah. So I would again record this as a light yellow, almost green color for this particular chemical. Very important. To clean up, rinse your loop, put it back on the table, cap your chemicals, turn off the gas, and let somebody else have the chemicals to do their sample. So again, remember, you're testing one, two, three, four known chemicals, and then three unknowns. No tricks. You just have to tell me at the end of this lab report, I believe that unknown letter A is, boom, 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 one of these four. I believe B is a different one of the four, and C is a third one of the four. Um, and that about sums up the flame test. The purpose of this is to identify the unknown and to see what Niels Bohr used as the foundation of his explanation of the behavior of electrons around the nucleus of an atom. He needed to explain why the different elements produce different colors and his explanation involved electrons moving from the ground state to the excited state by absorbing energy, heat, and then in the microsecond after that relaxing back down to the ground state and releasing a colored light related to how far that electron was traveling. Um, and so that's it. Thanks for watching. Enjoy the lab.